Carry on the tradition. Those simple words would be posted outside of Team Canada's dressing room throughout the 2004 World Cup of Hockey tournament. With an entire hockey mad nation behind them, the Canadians are motivated by pride and a desire to become an all-time team. Not too long ago, in the late 1990s, there seemed to be a panic among Canadians over the precarious state of our national sport. That national self-doubt has disappeared, replaced by a zest to demonstrate our superiority over others. Team Canada is ranked number one by the International Ice Hockey Federation. The Canadian population would like to retain that ranking, as hockey simply is our game. of hockey was formerly known as the Canada Cup, a tournament that began in 1976 following the feverish thrill of the 72 Canada USSR Summit Series. The 76 Canadian team had a roster filled with such future Hall of Famers as Bobby Orr, Bobby Hull and Guy Lafleur. It also featured Rogi Vashon in goal and Daryl Sittler up front who was instrumental in leading the Canadians to victory over Czechoslovakia in the inaugural cup. The next Canada Cup in 1981 would prove to be a disappointment to Team Canada after a torrid start. The USSR routed the Canadians 8-1 in the final for their only Canada Cup victory. In 1984, the Canadians were led by Gretzky and a cadre of his Edmonton Oilers teammates. The tournament MVP was John Tonelli of the New York Islanders. Canada outgunned Team Sweden in two straight games in the final to seize back the Canada Cup. The 1987 Canada Cup marked the emergence of Mario Lemieux as a true superstar during the Wayne and Mario show. Gretzky's feed to Mario in game two of the final versus the Soviets forced a deciding game as Canada won 6-5 in overtime. The Great One helped make marvelous Mario a household name with his setup to the big center for the winning goal late in game three. It was the stuff of legends, and it ranks with Paul Henderson's winning shot in the Summit Series finale as the most memorable by a Canadian in international play. Hockey in 87 was the best hockey I've uh, ever been a part of. Uh, the three uh, games against the Russians uh, were all great games, very fast-paced, and uh, as I said before, it was always uh, uh, a lot of fun to be a part of it. In 1991, Team USA met Canada in the finals. Barber picks it up. Steve Barber's got a break away. Barber going in. He shoots. He scores! The Canadians played the deciding game without Gretzky, who was out of the lineup with a back injury. Despite number 99's absence, Team Canada won their third straight Canada Cup title. Edmonton Oilers goalie Bill Ranford was named the tournament's MVP. After a five-year hiatus and a name change, the 1996 tournament was rechristened the World Cup of Hockey and featured rosters primarily culled from NHL teams. In 1996, the Americans became a hockey superpower.
It's five to two. Team USA, 17 and a half seconds. After upsetting the Canadians in the final, the Americans perhaps forever destroyed the myth of Canadian supremacy over Team USA. And the USA is about to win the first World Cup of Hockey. But Canada has been stronger in recent years after winning gold in Salt Lake and back-to-back -back world championships. World domination is the goal, and Team Canada is more than up to the challenge as they arrive in Ottawa to begin training camp for the World Cup of Hockey. Hockey fans are eager for their fix with the upcoming NHL season in doubt. The NHLPA and the league remained in tense negotiations, trying to hammer out a new collective bargaining agreement. It's a time of instability, and the Summer Olympics have just ended in Athens, Greece. Canada took home a disappointing total of 12 medals, and Canadians were looking for a new set of heroes to offer a shot of national pride. Team Canada 04 represents a beginning of the changing of the guard. Executive Director Wayne Gretzky and his brain trust chose their team using the model from the successful gold medal winning club at the 2002 Salt Lake City Winter Olympics. Gretzky knew that Team Canada required a healthy balance of scoring, defensive strength, solid net minding, strong special teams play, and unwavering grit, a Canadian trademark. We were never afraid of uh, taking young players or less experienced players. Uh, uh, and as it turned out, it proved to be right. But uh, I think that comes from probably a lot has to do with Wayne's experiences and, and to a certain extent my experiences with the Oilers of the 80s that I learned uh, very quickly that it doesn't matter how old you are, uh, how much experience you have, it's all about your passion and your ability to think the game and your ability to be a good team player. Gone are such notable names as Mark Messier, Brendan Shanahan and Eric Lindros. The 2004 lineup is a healthy mix of proven international leaders and young stars who represent the future. I think the, uh, the management has done a great job in uh, bringing together the right mix of players because we have the veteran leadership here of guys like uh, Joe Sackick and Mario Lemieux, uh, Mar Marty uh, Berdur, and uh, you also have a great mix of, uh, of young players too. You got a lot of young guys here, and uh, you really see the next uh, the next wave of Canadian players that are coming. They're all, you know, excellent players. They're they're big and, sk and skilled. Uh, I mean, Canada's definitely got the, got the youth uh, going in their favor. Canada is fiercely strong in goal, with New Jersey's Martin Brodeur touted as the starter. Brodeur is complemented by young Montreal native Roberto Luongo of the Florida Panthers. Popular Montreal Canadiens goalie Jose Theodore completes a Quebec triumvirate between the pipes for Canada. On the blue line, the Canadian roster is deep. Jay Bomeister also plays for the Florida Panthers and combines size and speed effectively. Edmonton Oiler Eric Brewer brings a wealth of international experience to Team Canada, despite his tender years. Adam Foote of the Colorado Avalanche, a two-time Stanley Cup winner. Ed Jovanovski of the Vancouver Canucks, capable of joining the rush. San Jose Shark defenseman Scott Hannon has a much-needed stay-at-home style on the blue line. New Jersey Devil Scott Niedermeyer is at the peak of his game, having just won the James Norris Trophy as the NHL's best defenseman. Wade Redden of the Ottawa Senators, rapidly emerging as one of the NHL's top all-round defensemen. Calgary Flames rear guard Robin Regeer has the right combination of good puck handling and skating ability to complete Canada's defensive core. Up front, Team Canada is icing one of the most impressive lineups of all time. Superstar Mario Lemieux returns as captain for one last chance at glory. Joe Sackick possesses the game's best wrist shot and has been a National Hockey League captain for over a decade. 
Boston Bruins center Joe Thornton is one of the NHL's top power forwards. Vincent LeCavalier leads a trio of Tampa Bay's Stanley Cup winning forwards in 2004. Martin St. Louis, the reigning NHL scoring champion and the league's most valuable player. Brad Richards was named the Conn Smythe Trophy winner as the most outstanding player in the playoffs. Calgary's Jerome Ginla, a former NHL scoring champion who is considered one of the greatest players in the game today. Atlanta Thrasher forward Danny Heatley will put some fear into opposing goaltenders with his impressive offensive talents. Ryan Smith of the Edmonton Oilers never fails to answer the call to play for his country. Phoenix Coyotes forward Shane Doan plays like a true Canadian with a tremendous two-way game. Detroit Red Wing Chris Draper won the Frank Selke Trophy as the NHL's top defensive forward. Philadelphia Flyer winger Simone Gagné counted on to bring speed and scoring to the Canadian offense. Detroit's Kirk Maltby, the quintessential NHL grinder who relishes in delivering punishing body checks. San Jose's Patrick Marlowe, an excellent passer with good hands who also throws solid body checks. And Dallas forward Brendan Morrow, one of only nine NHLers to amass 20 goals and 100 penalty minutes in the 2003-2004 campaign. Yeah, it is a lot of fun to be, uh, be a part of it, especially at my age, to uh, be able to play with the young players that we have uh, coming up in Canada. Some great talent, uh, um, Le Cavalier and, and Richards and uh, Thornton and, and uh, Ryan Smith and all these guys. Uh, it's been uh, a lot of fun to be a part of it. Wayne Gretzky, Hockey Canada President Bob Nicholson, Team Canada Director of Player Personnel Steve Tambellini, and Assistant Executive Director Kevin Lowe saw no reason to tinker with the success of previous international events. With that in mind, the hierarchy retained their coaching staff from the Salt Lake City Olympics. If it's not broke, you know, why fix it? Uh, they did a tremendous job in 02. There was a tremendous amount of pressure for Canada to deliver a championship, and they delivered a championship. Um, and then we really felt strongly a lot of the games were going to be in Toronto and Montreal, and all three of them, uh, who are head coaches, and Wayne Fleming, who's with the Flyers, uh, experienced a great deal of pressure being in the cities they're in, and we knew they could handle the mass Canadian media we were going to have here, and that's part of this whole process too. It's not just a matter of focusing on the players and coaching the team, but you're responsible for a country and you know dealing with the media and these guys do a great job and I think they're one of the best coaching staffs I've ever been around. Head coach Pat Quinn relishes being the chief decision maker once again. Quinn's assistant coaches include some of the best hockey minds in the business. Ken Hitchcock demands respect and knows how to get the most out of his players. Jacques Martin's offensive strategies are a key component of Quinn's team. And Wayne Fleming, noted for his player preparation, completes an elite coaching staff. It's, it's a chance to work together with, in my opinion, a very special group. It's a group that gets along so well together. We, we have fun together, we kid each other, we're all over each other uh, verbally at times, but we have so much fun together that when he says we'd like to get back together, uh, and try this thing again, it, you can't pass that up. Um, because it's a chance to work with special people. It's a chance to work with people who have the same passion for Canadian hockey as I do. Team Canada's chemistry is evident in the early days. Team outings and bus rides together create a family atmosphere. Many of the players have only known each other as opponents in the NHL, but new friendships develop easily. We've had a lot of fun together, having dinners and, and just uh, taking trips together. So, um, you know, everybody's been great. Everybody's bonded very well and very quickly. And it's, uh, we've still got another three weeks to go, so it's going to be even funner. 
It's not by accident that Wayne Gretzky has chosen players for the Team Canada lineup who were prominent leaders from the winning national teams of the last few years. Okay, I want the guys on the end just to squeeze in a bit. Brad, just a little, and the same on that side. Here, hold on, hold on. Kenny, come down here. There you go, there. Mario Lemieux, already in the Hall of Fame, an icon to the younger players. They look up to his accomplishments and his unparalleled ability. Here you go. Good. Yeah, I was, I was very nervous the first uh, four or five days, uh, making passes to him on the ice and everything, but uh, you know, he makes me feel very comfortable uh, off the ice. You know, when I found out I was playing for Canada and Mario was going to play, uh, uh, I couldn't believe it. I was going to be the same team as him. He's a great guy. He's, uh, you know, I sat next to him in the dressing room, so um, um, he made me feel uh, you know, like I was actually part of the team, so it was, uh, it was very nice. On paper, this team appears to be one of the greatest groups ever assembled in any sport. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three. Could this be the ice hockey version of the dream team? Canada's chief rival on the world hockey stage is no longer the big Russian bear, but its neighbor to the south. The American roster includes 11 players from the core team of 1996, with one notable exception. Goalie Mike Richter, whose standout performance was vital to Team USA's victory, has since retired from the game. The Americans will test three unproven goalies in this year's tournament. They hope the combination of team unity and experience will help them take another run at the title. We were able to win in 96, and uh, in 02, we, we lost a tough one to Canada. They played great in the finals, uh, went home with a silver medal. So uh, we've proven to ourselves that we belong here, and uh, we belong uh, in the upper echelon of countries, and uh, we want to continue to do that. We believe we're, uh, we're plenty of the team to, uh, to uh, bring it home this year. The European teams in the tournament are also battling their own adversity. On the North American side of the draw, the Russians are dealing with the disappointment of several prominent players being unavailable. With the fall of communism and the rise of NHL imports, Russian hockey has struggled to achieve success. The Slovakian team is the fourth entry in the North American side of the tournament. The Slovaks missed the first World Cup of Hockey in 1996. This time, they're looking to NHL stars Marian Gaborik and Zdeno Chera for leadership in this year's event. Team Slovakia won the 2002 World Championship, establishing themselves as a contender on the international stage. However, the absence of such NHL stars as Zygmunt Poffy will seriously hurt their offense. The European side of the tournament features a Swedish team loaded with talent. But the Swedes have suffered from a propensity for self-destruction at the last few major international competitions. A team boasting a wave of skaters named Peter Forsberg, Matt Sundin, Marcus Nasland, Daniel Alfredson, and Nicholas Lidstrom should not be taken lightly. The Czech lineup is formidable, but the team is still reeling from the tragic death of their head coach, Ivan Halinka. The popular Halinka died in a car accident just days before the start of the tournament. The Czechs will wear a number 21 patch on their jerseys throughout the tournament in honor of Halinka. Could the Czechs regroup and use their offensive weapons to their advantage? The Finnish team includes a cast of international veterans, including Saku Koibu, Timo Salani, Yeri Lettinen, and Miko Eloranta. Promising youngster Tuomo Rutu and Mika Kiprasov in net. The Finns are hoping that NHL playoff hero Kiprasov has enough magic left in him to perform miracles against the world's best. The German squad is definitely the long shot of the tournament, but possesses some dangerous shooters. Only the goalie Kolzig, one of the NHL's best, 
was given the starter's job by acclamation. When you look at it, uh, you know, you look at Russia and you look at uh, Czech, uh, Sweden and Finland, they've always had excellent teams. Uh, Any time that we went on world championship, uh, it was very difficult for Canada to win. We never had our best players because of the Stanley Cup. And when you look at the Canada Cups, Canada was very successful. Uh, we had great teams, but they were always very stiff competition in them. And we're playing in North America on North American rinks. Hello there. On the eve of the competition, Prime Minister Paul Martin receives Executive Director Wayne Gretzky, Assistant Executive Director Kevin Lowe, and Hockey Canada President Bob Nicholson and their families. It's an engaging visit, and ideas are exchanged. I was a lousy hockey player because in my time, these, the skates today That's are what tremendous. I used to say. It is the skates. If I, yeah, I, I couldn't skate, skate on the skates. Man, I I'd have been a great hockey player. I know. All right. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Well, I Yeah, no, thank you. I, I met your father on a number of occasions. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, I know he, he's the more famous director. I know. <laughs> I, 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 I love good to see you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Stay there. Team Canada draws the Americans for the first two exhibition games more resembling friendly games of shinny as opposed to battles between bitter rivals. After splitting 3-1 games with the U.S., the Canadians tie Team Slovakia 2-2 to end their exhibition play. Ottawa was good. It was a team getting together and just getting used to the guys and used to the systems and getting back on the ice at that, at that tempo of play. And, you know, we learned every, every exhibition game. We learned a bit more and we got better. And... Uh, we're going to take that into the tournament. En route to Montreal for the first game of the tournament, the players' moods are light. Oh, we need it. Oh, <laughs> still a good man. Still good. Jeez. Still falling. Still falling. It's a three card. Yeah, it's really tough. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I get one somewhere now. Two? Down to two, yeah. But for some, the anticipation is apparent. The Bell Center in Montreal. The players are humbled by the rich history on display in the Montreal Canadiens dressing room. It's going to be great. I mean, it's like I said, it'll be it's short and intense, and, and you have to be ready right from the the first uh, first period, first shift, and uh, you know that's that's what we're going to do. August thirty first, Team Canada opens the round robin against Team USA. There, baby! Yeah! Outside the arena, Canadian fans are certain of victory. Team Canada enters the ice surface in front of a frenzied Montreal crowd. The Canadians are playing in gold uniforms, a tribute to Canada's first ever Olympic gold medal winning hockey team, the 1920 Winnipeg Falcons. The atmosphere is electric and builds during the playing of the national anthems. Pour 
The intensity meter rises as the puck drops. The Canadians use home ice to their advantage, taking the play to the Americans in the first period, with the shots a lopsided 19 to 6 in Canada's favor. Martin St. Louis breaks the scoreless tie with Canada's first goal of the tournament. That's a power play goal, the first one. In, full edge, he had to move in, a in the second period, Joe Sackick capitalizes on a Team Canada power play. From the blue line, Sackick shot, scores! Joe Sackick with that famous wrist shot. It's 2-0 Canada before the Americans find some momentum with Bill Guerin's goal midway through the middle period. A shot by Guerin, and you knew when he was going to line one up, he'd find the opening, and he did on Martin Broder. High, and the USA is back in it. Billy Guerin, 34 goals last year for Dallas. He led the team in goals, points, shots on goals. Broder and knocked down in the crease area. Crowd wanted something called. Mario Lemieux, Canada's 38-year-old captain, takes offense to American Steve Konowalchuk's altercation with goaltender Martin Brodeur. Lemieux's new in-your-face style seems to inspire the Canadians. Foot. And the Canadian defenseman didn't appreciate the fact that... However, Canada is dealt a severe blow when defenseman Ed Jovanovski leaves the game with knee and upper body injuries, putting his tournament future in doubt. Billy Guerin really ran Gagne into the board. Canada hangs on to win their first round robin game, 2-1. September 1st, the Bell Center. Team Canada versus Team Slovakia. The Canadians change uniforms to a traditional white for their game against the Slovaks. It's the Canadians' second game in less than 24 hours. Slovakia is never in the game as Team Canada dominates early. Joe Thornton gets Canada on the board.
There's the pickpocket by Thornton on Chara. And into the net, Joe Thornton scores his first of the tournament. A dandy. Smith, all Canada. Ryan Smith pots his first of the tournament. Wow. Two, nothing. Smith's reputation as the consummate Canadian hockey player is well documented. Tonight marks Ryan's record 66th game for his country. Simone Gagne adds to the Canadian lead in the second period. Gagne, what a play to Gagne. And there's the Cavalier with a hit. Les Richards. Martin Saint Louis makes it 4 0 in the third period. Shot from the slot coming up. There it is. Score! What a pass! And it's 4 nothing Canada. Martin. And then Seaback over Martin Seaback finally Boston. beats the rock solid Bill Duel for the Slovaks only goal. Canada wins easily 5 to 1. The Slovaks are completely outclassed by the Canadians, who are getting stronger with each game. Canada 25 for Slovakia. 14 away margin in the third. The team travels to Toronto for the remainder of the tournament. The change of cities is good news to the Canadians, as Team Canada has never lost a game in Toronto. The last time that Toronto hosted a game between Canada and Russia was in 1976 in the Canada Cup. The Leafs' late owner, the colorful Harold Ballard, didn't want the communist bloc country at his Maple Leaf Gardens. The Canadians have a 6-0 record against the Russians in Canada Cup play in Toronto, going into their final round-robin game. Toronto, Russia versus Canada. Saturday, September 4th, 2004. The Air Canada Center hosts Team Canada versus Team Russia. A great rivalry is renewed. The night is special for Mario. It's the Magnificent One's first meeting with the Russians since he broke their hearts in the 87 Canada Cup. Before the game begins, a moment of silence is held to honor victims of a horrible hostage-taking incident in Beslan, Russia. The victims of the recent tragedies in Russia. Team Canada sports red uniforms against the Russians red, white and blue. The game lives up to its billing, and then some. It's classic Canada-Russia, not just a battle between a bunch of NHL stars. The Canadians again display a patient game. Takes a look in front of the net. A great chance for Draper, but is Knowing they'll eventually get a chance.
A scare is thrown into Canada when Mario Lemieux goes down early in the game. Puck harmlessly out over the line into the center ice area. Gagne had it for a second. And now Kozlov, no shot. The horn goes and the first period is done. The period ends scoreless. The nation breathes a collective sigh of relief as Captain Mario is okay. Hendricks. Heck of a time for one right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're due. <laughs> so am I. Yeah, yeah. In an eerie premonition, Robin Regeer sees Chris Draper's fortunes turning. In the second period, Brad Richards opens the scoring on a shorthanded two-on-one. Premonition becomes reality. Chris Draper pots his first of the two. Draper coming up behind everybody. Two nothing. Canada. They've exploded. In the third period, Sackick converts a pass from Lemieux. Sergei Gonchar drifts a shot over Brodeur's shoulder for the lone Russian goal of the game. Get back to it, and there's the first goal. Well, Brodeur was mad at himself, Bob, when that goal went in. He thought he had it. Jay Bomeister plays a superb game, replacing the injured Wade Redden. continue to do uh, but at the same time we got to realize that it's, uh, it's a short tournament anything can happen at any time so uh, we just want to keep playing how we are and uh, keep playing our system and uh, yeah, keep getting better the Canadians were winning playing a difficult game very well having the luxury of throwing out several different line combinations that could score And they had a giant in net. Martin Brodeur was sensational in the first three games. Brodeur came to camp in terrific shape, brimming with confidence. He was undisputedly Canada's MVP after the round robin ended, with Canada 3-0 on top of the North American pool. I think we were able to step up our game to, uh, to the level that we were able to be unbeaten. And, uh, well, we're going to need to be unbeaten if we want to continue in, in, in this tournament also. Hockey played this style on NHL-sized surfaces has proven to be tough on each team's roster. But the Canadians again come out on top in the injury intangible due to their amazing depth. Team Canada did not miss a step after replacing key personnel in the round robin. Scott Hannon's place in the lineup was made possible when Ed Jovanovsky was injured in the Team USA game. 
But there was another key factor to the Canadian success. From the blue line, sacking shots, goals! The incredible team camaraderie and the real sense that the group liked each other and were having fun. One of the things is you realize that you need each other to, to uh, get to that goal, to get to the, the championship game. And, uh, and I think as soon as you realize that, then you, know, you start coming together as a team. The Canadians were never behind in their round robin games. Their power play was intimidating. Their penalty killing superb. The Canadians were solid in all areas of their game. However, some of the other teams were making headlines for other reasons. Team USA was rocked by Brett Hull's benching before the game with the Slovaks, their only victory of the round robin. Hull led Team USA in scoring at the first World Cup of Hockey, but was held pointless during his two starts this time around. The Americans as a whole appeared painfully slow in comparison to the speedy Canadians. The Russians displayed new teenage phenom Alexander Ovechkin in their victory over Slovakia. They were also bolstered by solid goaltending as Ilya Brizgalov was brilliant in the Russian victory over the Americans. Maxim Sokolov also played well against the Canadians. The Russians would have to play smart hockey to surprise the Americans again in the quarterfinals. Finland finished on top of the European pool after tying the Swedes 4-4 in each team's final round robin game. The Swedes needed a victory to finish in first, but instead settled for second place. The Finns were led by the stellar play of goalie Mika Kiprasov, who earned two straight shutouts before the game with the Swedes. Kiprasov stonewalled the Germans 3-0 after blanking the Czechs 4-0 in Finland's opening game. We knew that we can win every country. It's just a matter that we had to put ourselves that this is going to be our day, any, any day we play the game. The Finnish team was short one defenseman after Jani Ninema left the team. The Czechs began the tournament slowly, but appeared to be gaining momentum with some solid play in later games, including a 7-2 pasting of the Germans, who went winless in the tourney. As the quarterfinals were set to begin, the hockey world wondered if the Canadian juggernaut could be contained. It's very fun right now. It's a great, uh, a great part right now of, uh, of the tournament. The first, uh, the preliminary round is over. We 3-0, we're very happy with, uh, with what we did. If Canada were to go on to win the tournament, their record would be a perfect 6-0. Monday, September 6th, and the start of quarterfinal play in the European pool. Finland is matched against the underdog Germans. The game is tight. A late goal by Miko Eloranta with only 3.22 left in the third period seals a 2-1 to Team Finland victory and advancement to the next round. Tuesday, September 7th, two quarterfinal matchups in the World Cup of Hockey. Sweden hosts the first game in Stockholm against the surging Czechs. The Swedes are swarmed early, and the goaltending doesn't hold up. The Czech's 6-1 victory surprises many, and it's one of Sweden's most devastating setbacks in international play. The Czechs would await Wednesday's victors in the other quarterfinal between Canada and Slovakia. The second game of the day is the most intriguing of the tournament so far. Team USA versus Russia at the XL Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. The Americans are obviously a different team than the one that lost to the Russians in the round robin. On this night, they're quicker and forcing the play.
Team USA gets a huge four-goal game out of Keith Kachuk and beat the Russians 5-3. Kachuk is a tower of power with five points on the night. The line of Kachuk, Bill Guerin, and Mike Madano collects 11 points. The Americans play their best game of the tournament, dismissing the critics who question their senior years. Team USA will now meet Finland on Friday night. It's all about attitude. Canada has several days to prepare for Team Slovakia, and the coaching staff uses team meetings to explain their game philosophy. And the big attitude against this team into here because they're going to come out and work and watch them practice the last two days. Uh, they definitely have not given up. You'll find if you go the full 60 minutes, they'll make them crack. They'll crack down. Eventually, they will crack. But if you don't sustain it, Sometimes they can be able to find a way. So it's important that as you get your attitude going, that whole 60-minute attitude, and again, that shift by shift, but the whole thing is you have to stay with them, you have to bear it down. The big focus for us is make them play in their end as much as possible. And Reggie saw some clips, we'll see some other stuff into there. That, that is not their strength point. Their team defensive play is not the strong part of their area. Wednesday, September 8th. Canada versus Slovakia in the last quarterfinal game. Team Canada spends game day doing their familiar routine. The first period sees a disallowed Jerome McGinley goal and several Canadian chances. The Slovaks are matching the Canadians. Quinn appears frustrated. This is evident in the dressing room during the first intermission. Well, all kinds of options, but if you're way ahead of it, our defense are going to get in the problem all night long, and that's when the turnovers start. We said we'd commit to 60 minutes here, guys. The last five or six minutes, maybe a figure was going to be goal scoring night. We're starting to miss checks and uh, let people go. Let's get this 60 minutes idea back in our game. Stop where it is. Nobody gets let go from any place. We finish our checks. And we stay above the puck when we're in the offensive zone. We're still starting to gamble. They're going to sit three up. When we have the puck, we've got a three on two down there. That's the way it's being played right now. So hold the thing and don't be throwing it away and don't just be gambling for it because uh, they're going to they're going to stick, sit there and suck up and try and uh, get some breaks to get back in the game. Let's keep it going, boys. 60 minutes here. Let's get our, our, our little things done right the rest of the way. Well, we the Team the Canada team. receives Quinn's message loud and clear. The Canadians explode in the second period.
Mario, Sakic, and Aginla are unstoppable tonight. The line scores one of the prettiest goals of the tournament. The Canadians score four goals in a span of nine minutes and 20 seconds in the second period. Talk about three-way passing. Well, you knew that line was overdue. Just like the Medano garen kachuk line last night at St. Paul. And this line is the Slovaks know they're finished. But another period is yet to be played. Canada on top, and here's another beautiful play. And score! That's a dandy pass for Aguila. Again, his second of the night. Team Canada hands the Slovakians another shellacking. This one, a 5-0 shutout. The Slovaks exit the tournament winless with only four goals scored. Martin Brodeur is perfect and has allowed a paltry three goals in four games. It is Brodeur's first ever shutout in international play. Aginla's two goals earn him the game MVP honors. Canada is now matched up against the Czechs in the semifinals. Losing is not an option. Lemieux knows that the team and the country expect to win. I think it's we have to approach them just like the Slovaks and the uh, Russians. I mean, they've got a, a lot of offense, maybe more of their defense jumps up on the play and, and causes that second wave. So uh, we have to respect that. And, um, you know, they're the type of team that will they'll, they'll go all out. They'll try to beat you one-on-one. -on -one. They'll try to beat you with their high skill, and we're going to have to make sure that we have everyone committed to playing good D. Friday, September 10th, at the XL Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Team USA versus Team Finland. The Finns will have to overcome jet lag after traveling overseas from Europe, where they played the entire tournament prior to this semifinal game. The crowd at the XL Center is very pro Team USA, but the Americans are challenged by the tight checking Finns. Doug Waite puts now the Waite Americans in front the in the second period and after Smolenski. tipping in a perfect cross ice pass from Scott Gomez. Scotty Gomez in front. Wow! Doug Waite! 1 0 USA! The Finns tie it up in the third period after Ole Jokinen capitalizes on a giveaway to beat American goalie Robert Ash. Chuk is the victim of a two-on-one finish body check, and teammate Bill Guerin takes exception. Team captain Saku Koibu is the hero for the Finns. He scores the winning goal with less than five minutes remaining. The 2-1 win is one of the biggest international victories ever for Team Finland, while the crushing loss for Team USA signals the end of an era. Many of the Americans' key players will have played their final game for the national team. The unflappable Mika Kiprasov only faced 17 shots in the defensive battle, but has now led his team to an unbeaten record and a berth in the World Cup of Hockey final. Saturday, September 11th, 2004. Game day for Team Canada. Yeah! Yeah! 
It's a beautiful late summer day in Canada's largest city. The rabid Canadian hockey fans are more than ready to cheer on their beloved heroes against the Czech Republic. The one thing about the Czechs, they may be the very best team at what they do best over there, and that is they are patient, they are strong, they are very skilled, they are comfortable with playing with a one goal lead and trying to win the game. On this day, Team Canada will face its biggest adversity of the tournament so far. Marty Brodeur, the man many proclaim to be the best goaltender in the world, is a game day scratch. Brodeur's ailing wrist is not improved enough to enable him to play. He's been in the nets for every minute of Canada's unbeaten run. But tonight's task falls to Roberto Luongo. Meanwhile, Gretzky has more than just his charges on the ice to worry about. His 15-year-old daughter, Paulina, is singing the Canadian national anthem. And there are afternoon rehearsals scheduled. Team Canada's trainers and staff prepare a special commemorative 9-11 patch for the players' jerseys. Well, you know what? We're hoping that it's going to cause some controversy. Yeah. 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 Get it off. Yeah. You can get it off, get it off. Yeah. Do it any way you can. Yeah. Let's move it. You have one done. Okay, I'm doing, that's okay. You play some, I'll take the thing off. Game time, World Cup of Hockey semi-final. CBC is broadcasting tonight's game in high definition from coast to coast. The new state-of-the-art mobile bustles with activity as the production crew prepares for the telecast. Janet Gretzky comforts her daughter Paulina before her performance. Ladies and gentlemen, as we rise to the singing of our national anthems, please join us in a moment of silence in memory of the victims and families of September 11, 2001. Thank you. Please join Robert Polmakov in the singing of the Czech Republic national anthem. And please join Paulina Gretzky in the singing of the Canadian National Anthem.
The Czech Republic versus Team Canada. The play is close in the early stages of the game. Neither team is playing their best period of the tournament so far. After 20 minutes, the teams remain locked in a scoreless tie. It's a quiet Team Canada dressing room during the first intermission. Gets the Canadians on the board in the second period. Yager lost it. Canada onside. Good play by Thornton to keep it onside. Doan gives it to him again. Here comes Thornton. He plays it into Draper. Looking out. Centering pass. They score! Right off the line. Eric Brewer comes in and scores. Joe Thornton was great on that play, too. Mario Lemieux then scores his first of the tournament to bring the house down. The Cavalier shot, rebound, Richards down, falling, another shot, scores! Mario Lemieux! Bang, 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 and it's 2 nothing. Mario finally gets the beauty. The Czechs are quick to answer back when Peter Sajanik makes it 2-1 Canada. Session in deep. Centering pass. Score! It came off a skate in front of the net, and it's a 2-1 game. Yaramir Jager is playing inspired hockey for the Czechs. His old Pittsburgh Penguin teammate Mario Lemieux also has his A game going tonight. The second period ends with the Canadians hanging on to their slim one goal lead. This is where we want to get that puck or any any rotations we get up there We want it right into that blue area and we'll be driving there for it putting it out any higher usually is uh, uh, Picked off by them and gone the other way <coughs> um, <coughs> Let's pick up our pace on the checking side now guys. We want to be relentless good first man pressure everywhere Make sure we're working back to our zone anytime they'll be chipping some pucks out trying to cheat They're the ones that have to play 
to play catch up, so we've got to be in good sound position everywhere. On the chip outs, our defense are going to need some help, so get back to the puck as hard as you can. Same as on the shoot ins, let's get back and come together. Five man units everywhere, finish our checks everywhere, and let's go bring this home. Boys, 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 they have been very strong in this game. The Czechs take the play to Team Canada in the third period. Chance here. Far side back to the line. Kept in. Czech Republic looking sharp. Centering pass to the big six. And Luongo saving the day here for Canada at this moment. Here comes another shot in front. Luongo right there and back up and Richards in trouble. Gets it through the foul. The new knows are in trouble and gets it down the ice. Back with it. Then Vincent LeCavalier is called for a questionable holding penalty. What's wrong with the Czech Republic? We're back again. However, it stopped at the line. And the play call, there's holding call over there. And it might be against LeCavalier on that play. Tip to the boards. Kept in. The Czechs capitalize when Martin Havlat ties the game at two. Now it's played back to him. And the long shot. Kick, rebound. Score. Right on the lip of the crease is Martin Havlat. Gretzky and assistant executive director Kevin Lowe appear to be nervous. Relief is provided when Chris Draper flies in on the wing and blasts a shot past Thomas Boku. Canada moves on it. Down comes Draper. Trying to get in. Rifles the shot. He scores! Draper! A beauty! Three to Canada! Chris Draper! It looks like the Canadians have regained the momentum, but on the ensuing faceoff. Television production crew reacts to the roller coaster ride of tonight's game. Video eight, right off the spot here, Frank, or if you can. 31, take one. You got it on the wide? 35, stay there. Right. That's a great shot. The tying goal is devastating to the Canadians and deflates their momentum. Coming in here. The seconds count down in regulation time. Canada and the Czech Republic are headed for sudden death overtime. Sudden death overtime coming up. Team Canada knows it has to play mistake-free hockey in overtime to escape the check onslaught and move on to the final. It is 20 minutes. Sudden death from the drop of the overtime ball. begins. The Czechs test Luongo, and he makes a couple of game and tournament saving stops on NHL sharpshooters Martin Ryshinsky. And Milan Hayduk. The Canadians pounce on the puck and skate over the check line. Scoops it out a break. Down they come the Cavalier. One man to beat. Can he beat him? No, he has to go in around the net. He falls. He sweeps it out front. Kept in by Schmidt, who shot us in. The Cavalier missed the open. He scores. Team Canada wins the semifinal game 4-3 in overtime with Le Cavalier's goal at the 345 mark. He now leads the Canadians in scoring with two goals and five assists. Here's how it started. It looked like a nothing play. Le Cavalier fights off the Jack player. Then he goes to the front of the net and he gets behind Marek Malik. And the rebound went.
went to Le Cavalier and he got it up over a prone Vokun to end the hockey game. The Canadians know they have dodged a major bullet. The semifinal game was a huge game uh, you know, for our country, so uh, I really wanted to go in there and uh, you know win the game above anything else. Uh, it didn't really matter what the score was, but uh, just to, to get out of there and win and be able to play in the finals was my main goal. September 13th, the eve of the World Cup of Hockey final. Take a look here, Brian. Brian. The Canadians are deep in strategy uh, sessions to come up with a plan against the defensive style employed by the Finns. We're doing all the initiating both ways. By this going is after a, them. a game in there. This is the game, the way they play it, right, it's very close to the North American, so we say style in there, where the game will be played in the trenches. We, we talk about grit, we got two key points. And this is regarding our team play versus the Finns. They play a real strong press up. They also spend considerable time studying goalie Mika Kiprasov's habits to try and gain any possible advantage for the big game. Some of us say when there's no traffic, he's a pretty cool customer. So uh, useless to say this uh, Kiprasov guy is a pretty good goalie, so we're going to have to work hard to get some goals there. And uh, describe a little bit of style. Um, a lot of goals are being scored uh, upstairs above his shoulders and uh, five holes. So those are areas that we're going to be looking for. The Finns, uh, they gave us uh, a tough game in Salt Lake. And, and internationally, they always give us a tough game. And they're, they played a strong team game. And their, uh, their skill level is improving. And as a nation, they're becoming, like all the nations involved in the World Cup, very capable of winning. Tuesday, September 14th, Air Canada Centre. Canada versus Finland. The World Cup of Hockey Final. Team Canada's dressing room is quiet. The players are focused. Tonight's game is perhaps the biggest in Finland's international hockey history. They have a hot goalie and nothing to lose. Team Canada's veterans set the pace on the first shift. That. They wave off any ice. The Canadians score on their first shot on goal in the game's opening minute. Galloping away to the line, getting to center with a pass. They get away with it. Mario sets it up. Score! Wow! Oh, baby! What a play! First goal, Canada. Joe Sakic. releases in the National Hockey League, a miscue there, and that let Mario Lemieux have a little more ice than the Finns would like. And Sackick, as I mentioned, Harry, he's got one of the best releases in the National Hockey League, and we just witnessed it. The Finns test Brodeur. Thankfully, the wrist appears to be a non-issue. Canada, don't get it out, long shot. Another one, great save! There were two saves! Well, Mark Ten 
Berger very quickly shows you that he looks like he's in the mid-tournament form. Oh, oh, oh. The Finns tie the game quickly. The players retreat to their dressing rooms. The game is tied after one period. The Canadians know they're in a battle for the title. Do the little thing, boys. It'll come, eh? Keep going. Assistant coach Ken Hitchcock devises a defensive scheme during the intermission. Listen up, fellas, on a couple of things. They're getting, they're going, they're going, doing a lot of cross ice dumps to speed here. And our defenseman, this defenseman's playing it. This guy's got to go back. He's got a one on one, and it, and it's a hard one on one. And what we have to have is our tracker's got to come all the way back, and you got to get right close to this defenseman because he maybe can't make a play, but he can take the hit and keep the puck there. He's, got to, he's not going to have any time to do anything. So our tracker's got to come right back and get right close to that. And our winger needs to bust his ass. So this might be the play that's available to you. The quick up off of their cross ice dumps. And they're doing it all the time. So we got to get our tracker back there. You've got to skate like hell. Get back. Help that defenseman on the cross ice dumps. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, guys. It's tied at one. The team is at full strength. Second period underway. Second period. Niedemeyer ahead to Dome. Shane Dome dumps it in wide of the net. The goal is the weakest that Kiprasov has allowed in the tournament. Sudden, they got caught with three men in. And Niedermeyer joins the attack to make it a four on two. And Kiprasov just gets distracted on that play from Draper coming towards the net. Team Finland is aggressive tonight and welcomes the rough stuff. Ryan Smith suffers an unfortunate face injury. The Finns score the tying goal on a beautiful solo effort late in the period. Go to Ryan one. He might do it. He's in. He scores. Tuomo Rutu was allowed to walk in there with one minute left. He beats Roder, and this game is tied. The game is tied at 2-2. Heading into the second intermission. Meanwhile, the World Cup of Hockey trophy is delivered to the arena for the post-game presentation. You're come out, put it on the table, and then stand kind of off to the side, the way you've done the Cup. Yeah, you can both on the same side. Okay, and then we'll deliver. There's a bunch of flag Third period. Canada takes the lead with a classic play. Shots and this line has 
The so-called checking line has four points. The trio is a force tonight. Joe Thornton has come of age, reminiscent of Mario in 87. Robin Regeer lays a punishing body check on Miko Aloranta. Canada continues to apply the pressure. The Finns desperately try to score the equalizer. The Canadians remain calm. Canada at 6 and 0 oh, becomes the first team in the history of the tournament to go undefeated. The country celebrates wildly. Vincent Le Cavalier is named the MVP of the 2004 World Cup of Hockey. It caps an incredible four-month span for the budding superstar. Le Cavalier, San Louis, and Richards have now won the Stanley Cup and the World Cup of Hockey in the same calendar year. Le Cavalier falls one point short of the tournament scoring title, finishing with two goals and five assists. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Canada Cup and NHL All-Star Boria Salming for the presentation of the 2004 World Cup of Hockey Trophy. Captain Mario Lemieux will now accept the World Cup of Hockey Trophy on behalf of Team Canada. Congratulations. Three Canadian players are named to the tournament's all-star team. The incomparable Brodeur, Le Cavalier at center, and Adam Foote on defense. Rounding out the team are Finland's rear guard Kimmo Timonen and winger Saku Koivu. Scoring leader Frederick Modine of the Swedes is the other forward. Yeah. Hey, we need our tune. 
Not only did Team Canada 04 carry on the tradition, they began their own. Uh, we put six loonies under the bench, the one uh, with uh, one victory each. So now we're going to grab it. Go get it? Yeah, let's go right get under it. The bench. Six loonies were taped underneath the player's bench, symbolizing each win. Two loonies are also removed from their hiding place, six inches below center ice at the Air Canada Center. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Chairman Larry Tannenbaum ordered the two specially minted loonies from Ottawa. One for Wayne Gretzky and a duplicate for Coach Pat Quinn. <laughs> Tannenbaum presents the loony to Gretzky. This is the loony I've been carrying oh, okay. on center ice. Buried this on center ice, okay? The start of the World Cup, and it was to be taken out. If Canada, oh, the only way is, is if Canada won you know, the Cup. And yes. Canada is. We're getting a lot of mileage out of the dollar. Who says a Canadian dollar is in strong? Absolutely. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think the, th the thing that surprised me most is the dedication that our team has shown. Um, and I shouldn't be surprised, but it's a pleasant surprise uh, in the manner in which they conduct their business and how they handle themselves. Um, you know, I was saying the other day, the, the minor hockey programs we have set up and the minor hockey coaches and the parents that these kids have and the junior programs they went into, the, these 26 guys are here are just really wonderful people and beyond being good hockey players uh, they're great role models canadians from coast to coast now have a new set of heroes to idolize shane doan's goal will become part of canadian sports folklore this special group of athletes may never be together again. We may have witnessed the last hurrah of some of Canada's most storied players and leaders. The perfect team completes its perfect run, achieving its goal of world hockey domination, proving once again it's our game.